God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll continue study in the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. I am so happy that you are logging on. I want you to know how much I appreciate you and how much I love you with the love of the Lord. In our last session, we read down to verse 17. Today we will reread verse 17 and continue to the conclusion of the chapter. I trust that you have your Bibles and you will read along with us as we study the Word of God. There may be some that are newcomers and you don't know what, exactly what we're doing. We're teaching through the Bible, verse by verse and chapter by chapter. Uh, we started with the Gospel of St. Matthew and have now progressed to the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. I know those of you that are regular listeners, uh, when we make certain announcements again and again and again, uh, it may bore you some, but for the benefit of our newcomers, the ones that are just now logging on, they need to know what we're doing. Well, shall we begin our study today? We read verse 17 in our last, uh, uh, last session. Let me read verse 16 and 17 again and then continue to the conclusion. The Word of God says, the Apostle Paul writing to the Ephesian church, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Letting them know, and even in that day, that the days were evil and we have to redeem the time. Anytime you use the word redeem, that means you have to go farther uh, or harder than what was previously done. Uh, when, you, uh, when something is in the pawn shop, uh, you go down to redeem it, you have to pay more to get it out than uh, what they gave you when you put it in the pawn shop. Uh, when you're running a race and uh, someone jumps out ahead of you, you may, start it, you may have started out even and they get out ahead of you. Uh, in order to win that race, you got to make up that, that that was lost uh, and get even again and then proceed to go farther. Well, redeeming the time, that means we have time to make up uh, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, uh, but understanding that uh, what the will of the Lord is. Uh, don't be unwise, but please understand what the will of the Lord is. And, and that's what Apostle Paul is taking his time and letting us know uh, what the will of the Lord is. And many times we fight against the will of the Lord and, and uh, uh, because we don't understand things. Let me let you know the will of the Lord cannot be determined by the culture. It cannot be determined by uh, what one person says. But it's determined by the Word of God. I told you many times that, that God never contradicts Himself. Uh, what He was hit with, what He will say audibly, uh, is going to be, be written in His Word. Uh, what He puts puts down in your spirit, uh, it will be written in His Word or backed up by His Word. He does not contradict Himself. So uh, the writer is letting us know, let's not be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, uh, and be not drunk with wine. Be not drunk with wine, in which is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Uh, well, uh, I can't make that any plainer. Be not drunk with wine, uh, 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 in which is excess. Now, I'm not going to go into uh, debates and get into arguments. Of, uh, some uh, churches uh, teach total abstinence, and some say it's all right to have a glass of wine, uh, uh, you know, but, uh, uh, but I do know one thing, it's very plain, it says be not drunk with wine, if you drink too much of it, and, and it begins to influence you, you have definitely done the wrong thing, I'm not going to argue with you and say that you're going to bust hell wide open because of a glass of wine, I know what the scripture said, the Bible says wine is a mocker, this is Proverbs chapter 20, Verse 1, wine is a mocker, strong drinks are raging. Uh, anyone deceived thereby is not wise. Now that's the word of the Lord. Uh, so the writer is saying, don't be drunk with wine. Don't be deceived with wine. Uh, let me let you know, uh, there's some things are deceptive, and wine is one of those. Uh, some people can't even have one glass of wine. Uh, and somebody else may be able to uh, drink that glass of wine and it not bother them. Uh, but another person, one glass of wine will lead to another glass and, and then another glass and then another glass until they're totally intoxicated. Well, our writer is saying, be not drunk with wine uh, and which is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Uh, I know that uh, uh, many uh, people in uh, uh, the strong the 
the stricter religions, uh, uh, they, they, they're, they're on the edge of their seat now, wondering why come I didn't tell you to stop and don't do this and don't do that. I'm preaching and teaching straight from the Word of God. I'm not trying to get uh, one denomination against another. I'm not trying to get one group of people against another. I, I'm trying to teach straight from the Word of God. Well, many of you, you have pastors. If you're not sure what you need to do, you need to go and talk to your pastor. Let him, let him talk to you and instruct you. If he's good enough for you to set up under his ministry, he's good enough for you to take his advice and do what he has to say. Well, uh, this writer said, Be not drunk with wine, in verse 18, in which is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Uh, let me let you know, if you let the Spirit of God come in you and you become filled with the Spirit, uh, that's one thing you're not going to do. You're not going to be drunk with wine. Uh, you're going to be full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost is going to influence you and, and not the influence of alcoholic beverages. Uh, how much planter can we make it? Uh, and be not drunk with wine in which is excess, uh, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the spirit. Uh, let the Holy Ghost come in your life. Let the Holy Ghost intoxicate you. Let the Holy Ghost take over uh, your inner being. Uh, if, it if the Holy Ghost takes over your inner being, your outer being is going to do the right thing. Uh, well, verse 19 reads, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, uh, singing and making melodies in your heart to the Lord. Give God praise. Uh, give him the honor to his name. Uh, you can do that by by uh, uh, speaking to yourself psalms. What do you mean? Read the psalms and you'll know what a psalm is. Uh, read poetry and you'll know what we're talking about here. Speak to the Lord uh, in psalms. Uh, uh, you can talk to him in poet, poetry. Uh, you can talk to the Lord even in songs. Some of you have great gifts of, of writing songs and, uh, and uh, setting down on it. Uh, use it for the kingdom of God. Uh, use whatever you have to praise his holy name. Uh, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Uh, uh, singing and making melodies in your heart to the Lord. Uh, let me let you know, you have to make it in your heart before uh, it'll do any good when it comes on the outside. Uh, your praise should come from the depth of your heart. Uh, it shouldn't be just words that you're saying. Uh, 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 just because you can sing good. Uh, you, uh, uh, this is how you, you get accolades yourself because you're so good at what you're doing. Let me let you know true worship comes from the heart. Uh, when you learn how to really worship him from your heart uh, and then let it come out. Uh, let the words that you say, uh, songs and, and and uh, uh, psalms and hymns and uh, uh, spiritual songs, uh, singing, singing and making melodies in your heart to the Lord. Uh, not trying to impress anyone, but do it to the Lord. Uh, shall we read verse 20? Giving thanks always for all things unto God uh, and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's one thing we need to grasp hold to. Uh, we need to give thanks for all things. Uh, some of you don't give, don't give thanks until you get something big. Like a, uh, like a brand new car, uh, uh, a brand new house, then you start thanking God. But, but don't you know, before you eat that food, you ought to thank God for it. You ought to bless that food, whatever it is. Uh, whether it's a hamburger or filet mignon, uh, you ought to thank God for it. Uh, thank God for all things. Thank God for your family. Uh, thank God that they're safe. And thank God that, uh, that they have their health. Uh, well, uh, 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 my, my, my eyes even tear when I think about about what happened in Connecticut, uh, but you ought to thank God that that He has blessed you, and not should not only should you thank God that He's blessed you, you have to also pray for those that are less fortunate than you. Uh, pray for those that have had struggles in their family. Pray for those that have lost loved ones. Uh, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns, uh, verse twenty read, giving thanks always for all things unto God uh, and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus. Uh, give thanks to God. In the name of our Lord Jesus, submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourself one to another. How can I submit myself to you? How can you submit yourself to me? That means always saying is, I'm there for you, my brother, if you need me. I'm there for you with whatever I have to give. If you need an encouraging 
one word, I'm there for you. Uh, I may not have all the money. If you ask for money, I may or may not have it. Uh, but I'm still there for you. Uh, I'm going to be there till we pray and till you get what you need. Uh, we can submit ourselves one to another. Uh, and, and, and basically, uh, Apostle Paul had let us know that uh, we should be followers of God as dear children. And let us know how we ought to love one another. All of this is conjuncting together. Uh, we should uh, we should love each other and submit ourselves one to the to the other in the fear of God. What well, shall we read? And this is going to be a touchy subject here in verse twenty two. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband, uh, as unto the Lord. Uh, for the husband is the head of the wife, uh, even as Christ is the head of the church. Uh, and he has uh, the Savior. He is the Savior of the body. Uh, now, that's a hard verse, I know, for the women. Uh, 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 it's hard to say, submit yourself to your own husband. Uh, but let me let you know, this is the word of the Lord. Uh, I said when we were studying, I believe it, it would be uh, 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 the... the uh, 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 Roman church when we were studying that chapter uh, uh, and also the, the, the book of Corinthians when we were studying that chapter if you want to take something out take something everybody enjoy out uh, take something like flee fornication out and thou shalt not commit adultery take all those things out and, and, and you make a whole lot of folks happy but I'm here to tell you we, don't, we shouldn't take anything out uh, the word of God is the word of God uh, if you believe one point of it uh, you need to believe it all uh, if you take out one point, you might as well trash the whole thing. Uh, so we have to believe the Word of God and understand that the Word of God is truth. Uh, and if we do what the Word of God says, we will be blessed. Uh, why submit yourselves unto your own husband? Uh, you ain't got to su submit to nobody else's husband. Uh, and if you haven't put a ring on it, uh, then you don't have to submit to him. Well, somebody say amen. I think I heard you. Well, uh, uh, why submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord? Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior, savior of, of the body. Verse 24, therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything, not just everything, be subject unto him. No, that, not, that does not mean, and we're going to cover that, that, that does not mean he's supposed to step all over you because you're subject to him. All that means is he's supposed to be a leader that you can look up to and that you can love and respect. Uh, and, and then you submit yourself to him. Well, I'll even go as far as to say this. Uh, the word of God said do it, so even if you don't look up to him, submit yourself anyway uh, and watch God bless you. Uh, well, therefore, as, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Uh, verse 25. Uh, husbands, love your wives even as Christ also so love the church uh, and gave himself for it. Well, don't you understand? It's not one-sided. Uh, if the husband loves you uh, and shows you that tender love, uh, it shouldn't be that hard to submit to him. Uh, well, in actuality, you're going to be submitting yourself uh, to one another. Uh, it's not one-sided. One uh, when you uh, are subject unto him and he's loving you, don't you talk? Well, well, well let's just say that ought to be a wonderful, wonderful union. Uh, that ought to be something so great because you're submitting and he's loving uh, and that, that makes everybody happy. Uh, well, shall we continue to read? Uh, I just read verse 25. Husband, love your wife even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, verse 26, uh, that he might sanctify uh, and cleanse it uh, with the washing of water by the word. Uh, love your wife. Uh, let me let you let you know it means something when you love your wife. Uh, and when others see you loving your wife and treating her like a queen. Uh, well, let me let you know that's a testimony to the kingdom of God. When they see husband and wife uh, loving each other and, and, and the wife uh, in sub subjection to her husband and, the, and then the husband loving her and that union is, is like it should be. Oh my, that sounds awfully good, uh, doesn't it? Uh, it would be wonderful if all of us could reach this point. Uh, don't you know our homes would be better off and uh, our churches would be better off and our, our cities and, and counties and the whole country, the whole world would be better. Uh, 
uh, if we just did what the word of God says, uh, it wouldn't be so much adversity. Uh, why? It would be easy to love uh, if, you, if you had subjection. Uh, it would be easy to subject uh, if you had love. Uh, can you understand? It's got to work both ways or, or it won't work at all. Uh, well, verse 27 reads uh, that it might present itself uh, a glorious church, uh, not having spot or wrinkle uh, or any such thing, but that it should be holy, H-O-L-Y, holy and without blemish. Uh, well, uh, don't you know the husband and the wife, they're part of the church, uh, and what you do reflects the church, and, and oh, Lord have mercy, uh, we could talk about it. I'm not authority uh, on uh, on great marriages, and, and I'll tell you, everybody that is married and ever was married, they know you had some problems. Uh, but if you love one another, you should be able to work those problems out. Uh, number one, just by doing what the Word says. Uh, everything the Word tells us to do, it's not easy to start off. Uh, it's not easy to do, but if the Word says it, uh, don't you know you will be better off for doing what the Word of God says? Uh, well, uh, the, uh, let me reread verse 27. Let it sink in that it might present, present itself uh, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, uh, but that it should be holy uh, and without blemish. Uh, we're talking about the church now. Uh, well, verse 28 reads, So ought men to love their wives uh, as their own bodies. Uh, he that loves his wife loves himself. Uh, what are you talking about? Love your wives as your, as your own body. Uh, well, you're not going to see me hitting myself. Uh, you ain't going to see me beating myself up. Uh, so I should have that same attitude toward my wife. I shouldn't beat her. I'm supposed to love her as I love myself. Uh, I shouldn't do anything to her that I would not do to myself. Uh, well, shall we read on? I know I'm ruffling feathers today, but I'm just reading the Word of God. I'm not here to point the finger at you and, and, and try to make you feel bad for what you've done, but we, we're going through the Bible verse by verse and chapter by chapter. That means we're going to cover your territory. We're going to cover my territory. We're going to cover everyone that listens. We're going to cover that territory. Don't you know all of us, the Word of God is here for all of us. And somewhere in this Bible, we'll find something that we need to come up to. If it's not submitting yourself to your husband or loving your wife, is there something in there that all of us need to come up to? So don't get mad when the Word covers a section that, that maybe uh, uh, maybe seems like it's talking about you. Uh, if it's the truth, it's the truth. Uh, well, that's the reason I, I like reading through the Bible systematically like this and teaching through the Bible systematically. Uh, that way you know when I get to a, a, a verse of scripture that, that you may be in that I'm not picking at you. Uh, I'm not throwing off at you. Uh, I'm in the, the verse of scripture that just happens to be the scripture that touches what you're doing wrong or what you're doing right. So understand that the Word of God is here for all of us to help us. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. When you love your wife, you love your own self. Let me let you know that that's a compliment to you when you love your wife. That's a compliment to your wife when you love your wife. That's a compliment to the church when you love your wife as your own self. Shall we read verse 29? For no man ever uh, yet hated his own flesh. You ain't never hated your own body, your own flesh, unless you really got a problem. Huh? And we got doctors for that. Y'all hear me today? And we also got the altar for that. Well, let, uh, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes it uh, and cherishes it, uh, even as the Lord, the church. Uh, well, don't you know you you take care of your own body? Uh, if you if you are are hurting somewhere, you go immediately to rub that hurt spot. If you do get a cut, you go immediately to mend and fix wherever that cut is. Well, that's uh, your wife is a part of you, so if there's a cut there, you should go immediately and mend up whatever that cut is because she's supposed to be as you. Let me let you know if your husband and wife, you are as one. I'm not talking about shacking up here, I'm talking about if you're married and your husband and wife. Verse 30 read, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. Let me let you know, we're all one. We 
the members of his body, talking about the Lord, of his flesh and of his bone. Verse 31, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. Well, that's in the Bible. If you married, I understand there's people uh, fall on hard times and you need to help uh, your mother and father. I am not talking about that. But let me let you know, it, when, when the, the immediately, uh, as soon as you possibly can, uh, the Bible is saying, uh, for a man to leave his father and his mother. In other words, you need to establish household on your own. Uh, you need to go somewhere where you're the head of that house. Uh, well, you came very well, uh, 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 your wife came very well, served two heads. Uh, so when you got your own house, you the head she's got to look up to uh, and no one else. Uh, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. I'm just giving it to you like it is, the Apostle Paul is saying. I know it's a great mystery. We don't understand everything, but let me let you know, if the Word of God says it, and you do it, you will be blessed for it. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church, and the church. That's what it's all about. It's about Christ and the church. Shall we read verse 33? Uh, Nevertheless, uh, let every one of you in particular uh, so love his wife uh, even as himself. Uh, and the wife, see that she re reverence uh, her husband. Uh, Apostle Paul, it seems like he repeats himself uh, many times. Uh, well, he started it off. Uh, uh, wife, be subject to your wife in verse 22. And, and uh, uh, again, he, he, he spoke about husband, love your wives. Uh, he talked about submitting more than one time about the wife. And, and then again, he talked about the husband uh, uh, loving uh, more than one time in this verse, loving the wife. Uh, and the wife uh, reverencing her husband. Uh, can you understand Apostle Paul? Uh, he's repeating it, uh, so you grasp hold to it. Uh, he's saying it again, so you get it through your head. Uh, I almost said thick skull, but I'm not going there. Uh, he's saying it again and again, uh, so you get that. Uh, not just one side, and that's one thing I love about the Apostle Paul. Uh, he don't cover just one side. Uh, he talks to the woman, uh, be in subjection to your husband. Uh, he talks to the man, uh, love your wife. Uh, he talks to the woman. Uh, reverence your husband. Uh, he talks to the man. Uh, this woman is like your own body. Uh, you supposed to love her like you love yourself. Uh, well, get that in your spirit uh, and your home will be better off. Uh, or if you desire to be married, uh, get it down in your spirit now. Uh, so when you do get married, uh, you're ready to do what the Word of God says. Uh, well, I'm not picking at you, uh, but we're in a troubled time. Uh, everything is going on now. Used to be years ago, now I've been in the church a long time. I, I will never tell you I've been perfect uh, for, for 35 years, but I have been uh, a minister for 35 years. Y'all better get this. I got a license and credentials to prove everything I said. I've been an ordained minister, an ordained elder uh, since I was 24 years old. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you what I am today, but you can count back if you want to. I've been a minister of the gospel, an ordained minister of the gospel uh, well, since I was in my early 20s. Uh, and I believe the word of God. I believe it. I believe it so much. Uh, even if it don't work for me, uh, I believe it. Uh, even if, uh, if the one across town, uh, 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 one below in your church don't make it, uh, I still believe the word of God. Uh, and you should grasp hold of that yourself. Uh, you ought to love the word of God so, uh, so uh, that regardless to what your relationship is and what sit your situation is, you want to do what the word says. Uh, well, my friend, I love love you with the love of the Lord. I would not teach down through the Bible like this if I did not love you. God put on my heart to share with you my devotion. And as God is speaking to you through me, he is speaking to me so that I can speak to you. So I encourage you, my friends, stay with this ministry and watch God bless you. If you would like to contact me for any reason, if you would like to ask a question, uh, you can write me at the Word with Chester Ministries, uh, Post Office Box 200483, uh, San Antonio, Texas, uh, 78220. Uh, you can also reach me at my website, uh, www.poemsbychester.com. Uh, That's P-O-E-M-S-B-Y-C-H-E-S-T-E-R.com. That's poemsbychester.com.
www.thegiftsofgod.com. Remember, this is a nonprofit organization and all gifts are tax deductible. I love you, my friends. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.